everybody. This is the thrifty pilot here. But um, yeah, so I have an extra monitor and I like to see what's going on in the air as a quick glance just to kind of see what's going on in the world. And I kind of put that together with the Raspberry Pi thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get images like this on a monitor that you have around the house, around the hangar. Uh, or a TV even. Um, so I'll show you both of those. It's pretty nifty. The Raspberry Pi platform is pretty awesome, especially with aviation because you can do things like this. Uh, it's readily available out there. So this is kind of a tutorial type thing on how to make something like this a possibility for you. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be super simple. Uh, really there's only a couple components involved here and any monitor will pretty much work for the most part as long as it's got an HDMI connection and then uh, the Raspberry Pi so what is this Raspberry Pi thing if you've seen my Strat X uh, always have to have that inflection at the end video there um, you already know and you can already tell that the Raspberry Pi is pretty powerful in general and uh, when it comes to aviation, there's quite a few applications that you can put to work uh, this little microcomputer. And that's exactly what it is. The Raspberry Pi is a little microcomputer. Uh, so think of this as pretty much a desktop computer that you can put in like the palm of your hand um, legitimately. It's, it's pretty amazing how they've done this. These little computers are used for education purposes, for little tinkerers for big tinkerers like ourselves and for everybody in between. They're just pretty amazing how they operate. Everything that you need is on board um, and it just makes it so simple to do little projects like this. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, is the way to go. Uh, it already has the ports built in. So put it in the little case right there and you've got the full size HDMI port on that side and on the end there it's got the four USB slots and then if you want to hook it up to your router it's got the uh, LAN connection there. Um, since these are little project boards you can do all kinds of other stuff uh, which I won't go into with this video. Uh, again if you're interested in the Stratix, uh, kind of a competitor to the Stratis, I would strongly suggest you watch that uh, video that I put out there. So because these come with a SD card that is the perfect size it, it literally is 32 gigs is the perfect size for these guys um, and it comes preloaded you don't have to worry about anything when it comes to software so I'll show you in just a second you literally take this SD card right here and you plug it into the back uh, this is the front the back of the uh, device there and you're about 90% done. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, this one comes even with an HDMI cable. So uh, let me switch tables here. I will put this all together for us. Okay, so when you get your kit, uh, it'll come in a box with everything that you need basically. And <clears throat> this is the Raspberry Pi 4. I just got this in, but the 3 is basically the exact same thing. Um, Four is just a little bit faster, but uh, for the money, it's definitely worth it to stick with the three. Um, I'm actually kind of iffy on the four, just because it's got uh, a couple different ports and yeah. So, Raspberry uh, Pi three, uh, like I said before, is great for this project and really any future projects. So, it's it's the same way to set these things up, regardless of the. Um, two three or four there's even a two out there so uh, it comes with a case and basically all you do is you just pops right in there and then you've got the center case there pops right in there if it comes with a fan you're going to um, position the Raspberry Pi like this. The red wire goes into the second pin back there, as you can see, one, two. And then the um, the black wire lead goes into the third pin, one, two, three. 
and then the fan is either in there um, it will screw in here or it will snap in here it doesn't really matter it's very very simple to get this in here this case uses no screws whatsoever I'm kind of fond of that because it just snaps together like that some uh, cases will screw together it doesn't really matter and second to last thing ooh, it is trippy doing this is to put the preloaded memory card right into the slot like this you push it down until you can't push it down anymore and then I am using a wireless keyboard and mouse combo look out um, but you can use really any keyboard or mouse it doesn't matter and you just stick it just like a regular computer right in there what I'm going to do next is plug the USB cable in here um, and then the power and that's literally all you need to do so let's go to the next steps over to the big TV there alright so this is how the Raspberry Pi starts up if you see a rainbow screen then it goes blank that's actually a good thing. Uh, what it does is it measures your screen so it can test your um, monitor's resolution. Like I was saying, this works for all monitors. Um, even if it's not HDMI compatible, you can get the adapters. So if you have a old monitor that doesn't have an HDMI port, you can do that. Um, I'm thinking about keeping it on my TV here so I can switch back and forth if I'm watching Hulu or something and I want to kind of check out the weather. I can go back and just change the inputs on my TV and this will always be running. So let me grab my keyboard real quick and I will show you what's going on. So we've already ran the setup. Uh, it's very simple. The first time you do it, you just follow the prompts. Uh, the Wi-Fi is right over here. Um, you can just select the Wi-Fi there and uh, it's just a website so alright so before I uh, enter in any type of web page or show you how to do anything since this is going to be running um, non-stop and I do not want the Raspberry Pi to go black that's like a power safe mode it's a sleep mode uh, I want this to be uh, shown all the time 24 7 so what you do is you click on this little box right here it will bring up a little terminal window and you type in sudo sudo space apt slash get space install install space x screensaver and what I'll do is I'll uh, include this in the description there so as soon as it uh, comes up for the first time, this is the first time you've seen this uh, screen, you click on the little terminal window, which is that blue window with the little carrot looking thing on the side, and then you enter this in. You press enter. What it'll do is it will install the software. If it asks you a yes or no question, just uh, answer yes that you do want to install the software. Once I have done that, I can exit out of this Raspberry, shut down, and do a reboot. With this reboot, it will actually make sure that uh, that software is integrated into the OS, and uh, it should work on this install. Um, what I'm going to do now is click on the Raspberry again, go down to Preferences, and this should work. Crossing my fingers. There we go. So, under Mode, you just go over here and you do disable screensaver that's literally all you have to do there's no save or anything like that uh, file and then quit if you want to do that Boop. there we are and now I'll show you how to set up the actual website click on this web browser you wait a few seconds and it will um, come up with a place to actually put the URL and for most people, they already know this website because they do a great job. It's windy.com. So you just hit enter there and close that box. And here you go. This is basically the, the live map. So there's a few settings that I like to do. You can um, sign up for this. It's free service. You don't have to pay anything at all. Um, but for 
this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how to set up the settings and then you can go from there. If you do log in, um, it saves the settings and it will put you where you need to go. So, a few things, radar and satellite, all the way to the right there. I like to click on that and I go to weather radar. That will change the map. I want to allow for my location to be known. Uh, for all those who are watching, that's, that's where I'm at there. Um, okay, so this is showing the current uh, weather radar. If I want to animate, I just click this button down here. I will do that last because I want to make sure I'm not, you know, confused by my settings here. So uh, I want to go down here to the little airplane, and I'm going to click that. That will show the airports, and it will generate the, uh, the METAR um, visual indicators here. You can scroll over if you'd like. Again, this is running in the background, and I really don't uh, necessarily care uh, about all of them. Just having those visual representations of the airport will help me out tremendously. Next thing I want to do is enter in an airport next to me. So, okay, FCI is one. Little plane here. Uh, I want to select that. And what that will do is it will generate this info plane down here. Totally optional. Do whatever you want with this thing, but this is what I like. So <clears throat> this will give me the uh, meteogram, which is basically a snapshot of the day, what's going on with that. Clouds, rain, um, it will also show snow accumulation, all of that type of jazz on the left side. I keep that running. Okay, so now you have to decide how much you want to have this thing zoomed in. If you want uh, just your local state or something to that effect, you can do it like this, and you can see all of the airports. As you can see, I'm IFR. Um, not too great weather today, but that's the gist. I kind of go like this because I try to, uh, I, I do pretty good cost country, so I'm usually, uh, if it's just a day trip, going to land somewhere within this space here. And then finally, well, second to finally, I should say, I hit the animate button, which this will consistently refresh throughout the day. If you want to slow it down, you've got three buttons here. You've got slow, normal speed, which is the default, and then fast. Then you have your options of 12-hour radar, 6-hour, uh, or 1-hour. Truthfully, all I care about is the 1-hour to see that trend there. Um, play around with it. If you like it, great. If you don't, don't. Now, this is the very last thing I do before I unhook my keyboard, and I just leave this thing stationary. So what I do is I hit, let me see if I can get it on this keyboard here. Ugh, there we go. Um, it's F11, so however on your keyboard you can uh, press the button F11, uh, by all means do so because that expands it to the entire uh, width and height of the screen. So if you do this, um, it will just be running in the background and you have nothing to worry about. So hopefully you'll find this little raspberrypiwendy.com build helpful. I know the actual platform, wendy.com, not sponsored or anything, is absolutely amazing. Uh, I leave this on at the hangar all the time, and I uh, am going to leave my Raspberry Pi hooked up for now uh, until the next project comes through to show this um, map with the moving radar. I think it would be pretty nice to be able to switch back and forth from whatever I'm watching on the TV, um, or maybe just the old monitor to... Uh, in the back of the room there. Put this on just constantly so I just have to look backwards. But um, this approach can be used for any web uh, application. So uh, for flight that might be a good one or NOAA weather or something to that effect. But um, yeah, pretty straightforward. And since you have a Raspberry Pi now, uh, you will be able to do all different types of projects. Again, if you've uh, not seen the Stratix, um, video, I will add it into the description there uh, below. So until next time, see ya.